Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% Achievement Dad Trophy Guide and yes, I'm a little late, whoa, a lot late, but we are getting it all in the very wordful Apocalypsis, the tree of the e uh, see, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, see I can't even say myself. This was developed by Punch Punk Games, published by Clabata, and is usually available for only 4 19 anyway, but has a huge mega sale on at the minute where it is literally £1.67 slash $1.99. I mean, you can't even get a proper bit of food or drink anyway for that. Bargain the city of a city of a city. Sorry, no system of down singing yet. Let me, let's just move on. Uh, so we play as Ari. Before he became a world-renowned wizard, as his girlfriend, the beautiful Gianfranco Zula, is deader than a dead thing, and he has to venture out into the unforgiven lands to get her back. Now, great side note, actually, this is the awesome black metal band Behemoth's first venture in the world of video games, with lead singer Nergal narrating. That is seriously cool. Uh, anyway, achievements-wise, they're easy enough, but there are a lot of complete this or that puzzle first time but it's okay because one the puzzles are genuinely quite slow and forgiving and two if you do fail you can simply press start go into your map and choose the specific bit you were at to try again without voiding the achievements so just pay attention to what i do and grab and see and you should be fine just fine that's fine now we're going to be looking at around one to two hours, maybe slightly more depending on how quick you can get past certain puzzles and achievements uh, to get this game done. And so with that being said then, let us begin. Now we're going to get to this unskippable cutscene first, but let me show you how a few things work. So. Uh, the A button is to pick things up and basically interact with the world. Uh, you can press the B button to run faster. Um, every time you pick an item up, it'll be in your inventory in the right hand corner and then you can press the Y or X button to get to the next item. See how that works? So when you pick up um, a particular item, you can press the right trigger to get rid of and bring back the cursor, as you can see. Uh, so when you've got an item, you can then just press the A button on whatever it's meant to be used with, such as this lever right here, and then get that one up and then, oh, we've got a beautiful legless witch. Well, she looks pretty, well, she, I don't think she's going to need to use this, so we'll just borrow that, so. Hey, look at us. She, why is she closing a fish? She's calling us a wanker. Hey, screw you, legless biznitch. Anyway, with that, um, use it. Use the stick and then use it on the rat to get its uh, head. That was a hell of a shot, by the way. And then use that with the cat. This basically is just a tutorial, just gets you used to things. Um, the controls do take a little bit of getting used to, but uh, ah, you'll be fine once you sort of know what you're doing. That was basically it for me in terms of, you know, what the hell did you have to do first. Uh, the right, like I said, the right trigger... If you get rid of the cursor, you can move left and right by yourself. Um, but a lot of the time, I just sort of press the A button on the floor to walk to places. Just easier for me that way. Um, right, so. Going to be doing a lot of collecting, obviously, with it being a point-and-click adventure the, uh, game. That's how things usually work. It's nuts, isn't it? So if you go left, just push the cursor to the left screen and then pick up this, um, obviously, you know, big crystal ball and whatever the hell is in that hand. Or grab the whole thing if you want. Yeah, why not? You got room in your pockets. Uh, pick up the ladder from the <laughs> from the back there, and then use the ladder. So, like I said, you press the X and Y button to go into different bits of your inventory. So, use the ladder on this bookshelf to grab the knife, which apparently we couldn't reach with our hand because uh, you know they're exactly the same size. Open up the cupboard and go ahead and grab the book. Already getting our ass into the uh, black metal world right here. Um, now, again, so if we use the X or Y button to go over to the knife, up into the inventory right there, and then we can use it on the bat. Get some bat wings. Are we going to start eating bat? Is this going to be an Ozzy Osbourne thing as well? Um, <laughs> anyway, what you need to do... Uh, the guy coughs a lot in this game. Harry's not a very good wizard in this game. Um, go ahead and grab this flower. Now, there are seven of these flowers... Um, located within the game, uh, just for an achievement later on. So go ahead, make sure you grab that flower first before using the bat wings um, and grinding them up on the old uh, pepper grinder right here. So pick up the remaining bat pepper and then we can grab all of these uh, the daggers or something, whatever the hell they are on the floor. I'm already feeling metal as hell. 
Jesus Christ, I already feel like starting a black metal band myself. Oh yeah. Urgh. See? Hey, there's nothing to this whole screaming thing, right? Nothing to it at all. Anyway, when you've picked all four of them up, use them on the pentagram. Uh, now, I got in trouble last time. But the last time we used one of these, I said pentagon for some reason. Because I am a mong. Uh, but yes, use all four on the pentagram. Because we are about to start a black metal band right here. And what we need to use then is the hand first, and then use the old crystal bollock, the old crystal ball. Again, X or Y to move things in your inventory. Otherwise, it just sort of shrugs his shoulders and he's like, Hey man, you're stupid. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, use the bat pepper. Job done there. Then use the book on the altar, just in the back. That crow's really pissing me off. We're not going to die today. Even though Harry looks miserable as hell, whatever the hell he does. You don't see him crack a smile once, all you do is see him coughing. Ugh. That's COVID for you. Uh, back then, apparently. Interact with the book, and then this whole little cutscene begins, and that will be the end of this room. Oh no, Zula. That's why I call it Gianfranco Zula. Play on football, Gianfranco Zola. If you're a football fan, that's probably funny to you. Um, but anyway, our dead girlfriend looks deader than a dead thing, so... We've performed the ritual, now we've got a long way to go. Roughly about an hour or so to go. Which is quite the journey, to be honest. Christ, I can barely get from here down to the shops in an hour. So, big ups to old Harry Potter right here. Whenever Harry closed his eyes, those memories were already there. That evening, Harry and Zula were resting at the top of the hill. All of a sudden, a star with a long, bright tail fell from the sky. Zula, hypnotized by what she saw, decided to follow it. Harry wanted to go with her, but Zula stopped him, explaining that according to an old legend, it's a girl who finds a fallen star that will be given the gift of eternal love. love. Let us begin all of the puzzles that we possibly can. So, first thing we're doing, a lot of death in this game. Hmm. You wouldn't expect that from a, from a black metal band, would you? Anyway, pick up the ladder and then place it down below you before heading down. Uh, we need to get rid of the water. Again, although I suppose what we could have just done is swam across. Or literally jumped across. But, again, Harry doesn't have those wizard powers of using his legs properly or his arms yet, apparently. So... Pick up the plank, we'll need that for later, then pick up the two gear cogs on the right hand side. Don't worry, I will let you know which puzzles are coming uh, coming up for the achievements and everything. So don't you panic your pretty little head off about it. Anyway, use the one gear cog on the right there, and then use it once. So just press the A button on it once. And then again. And then make sure it's looking like that. Interact with the middle cog. Not once, but once. And then on the left hand side, <laughs> uh, use the next lever and then just use that not once, not twice, but uh, twice, apparently. But <laughs> what that should do then, st that should start draining the water. And then we can just head on back to the left. Now, now there's a big deep hole again. You'd think you'd just be able to swim across, but hey, maybe it's cold. Maybe that's how the guy died, because he didn't want to swim across. So they just shoved arrows in his eyes instead. Who knows? Anyway, pick up the ladder, go across, and then we should only have the plank in our inventory. So you can just use that with the blank space directly in front of us. And we are happy with that one. Right, so we've got apparently uh, Thor, who, um, this was way before his uh, god days, this, he was an alcoholic, 
Um, an alcoholic executioner, apparently. Right, so head up onto the top floor right here, and then interact with the first Ascophagus. Grab the tongue, which kind of just looks like a blade. Open up the second one. And there should be another silver tongue for us to grab right there. Or another knife, or whatever the hell it is. And in the third one, as you can see, it's just gently sitting as for us on the floor. Bang, tidy. Right, head all the way down and go to the bottom left hole. So we need, be, need to be doing a bit of revenge scheming. So interact with the um, poison box directly in front of us. Don't worry, this isn't timed or anything for an achievement. Um, but we just need to do three things or put the correct three symbols in. So the first one is an O with sort of two lines going down the middle. Uh, this is the best way I can describe them. The next one is going to be like a pitchfork slash cactus, whatever you want to describe it as. And the third one is the pitchfork with the cactus with the sort of broken right wing hand metal bit, whatever. Anyway, with that, you should now get the poison. Try not to drink it yourself. This is basically Russian vodka in a... Uh, <coughs> or Russian... Yeah, basically Russian vodka in a glass tube. 85% of pure death. Now we can just head back out. Basically what we're going to do, if you're probably wondering, we're going to swap it with the uh, bottle of water, whatever the hell the Thor is drinking there at the top. Thor before he was hot, before he became Chris Hemsworth. So as, <laughs> as soon as he stops drinking, interact with the bottle, that'll swap it out and that will kill the guards. Well, that's what happens when you kill my missus, mate. Unlucky a brother. You dead. You dead. I, I think he's dead. Or is he just taking a long nap? Anyway, we're going back into the same bottom left hole. Who dies standing up? That's impressive. And who, d d Don't people normally shit their pants after they die? Or is that just a common myth? I'm not sure. Never given anyone poison, to be honest. Uh, just interact with this woman right here. We're not doing it to be nice. I, I think she's dead. She looks very seductively dead right now. But we are actually needing the ball which she was attached to. So, well, unlock the key, grab the ball, and get on out of there. Uh, but the reason we need this, basically, obviously, we need to get past the hardcore demon lion thing. So the way we do that, uh, put the ball on the hook. That is going to open up the gate. Grab the left-hand side most meatiest of meat. See, now... If people were trying to raise this demon lion as a vegan, we wouldn't be able to do this, apparently, because there are some dogs out there, apparently, who are on vegan diets, which is all <laughs> bullshit. And all animals need a big, chunky, chunkness of meat like that for us to sneak by. So, give him that, head to the right, we are into the next area. <laughs> no offense, vegans, I was just joking. Raise your animals as well as you want them to be. Ish. So we are coming up to one of those um, complete this first try puzzles. Now remember, if you do make a mistake, just press the start button, go to your maps, and then um, just go to the last place that you were to start it again without voiding the achievement. Otherwise we can pick up the scroll, interact with it, and then we have to do the three correct sort of parts right here. Now the first one is the top one, so it's the ZO. O with a line through it at 15, whatever that is, number 15. Wait for it to get to you, or wait for it to get to the point, and then press the button underneath. That is the first one. The next one we're doing is, again, Pitchfork slash Cactus, whatever style that is. And as you can see, that's got the number 55 by it. So it's Pitchfork Cactus, 55, wait until it gets into position, and then give it the old bash of life. The third one will be the sort of second option on the list, which kind of looks like a VR. I don't know, I just got fuck on the brain. So VR 35, wait for it to get into position, push the button, that will be, that should be that achievement. The soldier achievement. 
Now, this one is going to be, this one was the uh, hardest one for me in the game. It did take me a couple of tries, but basically just press the A button and you get to the point just before the um, explosion. So again, all you're doing is waiting for, basically just look at the patterns, press the A button, and then you should be good to go. Uh, again, this may take a few tries, just have a look at the patterns of the um, explosions. Obviously, you want to be going just after the main bit of grey smoke. Um, but again, oh, this should only take about a minute or so if you can get through this the first time. Again, if you do fail, just press map, uh, press start, go into maps, and then just reload the same point. It'll, it'll, it won't void the achievement. Uh, just press the A button as soon as you know that you've got the pattern down, and this is the part where the achievement should unlock. So, apologies, that one went quite quickly. <laughs> that did go quite quickly right there. Uh, but before heading to the right, head to the left. You should get the achievement here, the old evasion. Uh, but we're going to be grabbing the second out of seven flowers. So make sure to pick that up before heading to the right, past the stairs, and into next area. Haru would never forget what happened next. The water surrounding the village rose up and turned pitch black. People dropped dead where they stood, and crows circled in the sky above. Someone said they had seen Zula following the star a few days earlier. That was enough to accuse her of witchcraft. of all things we end up on a big giant fish so what we need to do is interact with the legs directly in front of us that drops a key and interact with the knife in the fish's eye we've got the um what well, looks to appear dodrio from pokemon's ev epic evolution uh, but grab the ladder on the left hand side so for some reason we can't slide down the fish but we can as you can see we can walk on absolute thin air impressive stuff there from harry potter the coming up the wizard Coming up the wizard, you what, mate? Anyway, when you climb down the ladder, interact with the knife handle right there, and that will automatically give us the full knife, which is always nice. And then you can interact with the key. Make sure to interact as well with the third flower, which is just on the left-hand side by all the fish in the big fish's mouth. Man, I really want to know what the hell happened here. That could feed a hungry villagers for at least a day, especially if they're fat villagers like me. Um, interact with the fish then <laughs> in the big guy fish's mouth and then what you need to do is just find the spot on the fish make sure that you got your knife equipped and I, I, you can do it with a key but it'll probably take a lot longer and that'll chuck it up into a nice chunky bit of eight should do it automatically from here mmm delicious now you can take a taste if you want but what we actually need yeah probably not probably want to spew your guts up with a uh, raw disgusting fish so we should have eight so just feed the um, mega dojo dojo uh, evolution you're gonna have to do it all eight times before you can release them there with the shackles in the bottom right hand corner with the key ah but of course it's never that easy is it we have to actually fix the key to release uh, Dode Broo. Yeah, why not? Dode Bro Broio. Ah, anyway. Uh, interact with the first cog and then put it sort of at the set, uh, just the top of the um, cog at the bottom. Then grab, dra grab the bottom cog and put it opposite. And then grab the two small cogs and then put them just underneath. And then that should get the key working. Dode Brio. Dode Broio. Dode Broskio. Nah, I don't know. I can't think of a name. That's why the Pokemon people are in their jobs, because they can think of, like, 
names like Love Desk and Trubbish. Oh, a Pokemon who's a rubbish bag. Oh, scary. Um, just joking. What a legend he is. Better than Arceus and Zapdos and all the legendary Pokemon. Anyway, into this new area, we're going to interact with the um, guy at the top right-hand corner. I really don't know. This looks like a hell of a party, to be fair. I've got no idea what's going on. Um, interact with the guy on the left, Big Beak. And he's going to grab us the sword, so... Now what we can do is grab the rock, or the hammer, sorry, from the left-hand side, just behind the guy that we got the sword from. And then head down, and what we need to do is put the blade on the anvil. There we go. And then put the handle, of course, on said anvil as well. Then use the hammer. That's what gets us this big, mighty, meaty, big dog sword. So we need to use this sword... Now you think you just kill the rat, grab the coins and head on, but what we actually need to do is use the sword on the leper guy right here. The old leprosied up legend. Well, he's not a legend because he's dead. Use it. <laughs> use the sword a couple of times anyway. That's going to get this incredible looking fish thing to, um, I don't know. He's going to eat it anyway. And then what's going to happen is this owl with the face of a man. Who's been bumming owls, please? We need to speak to the owl. So go up to the face man owl. Um, who has been sticking their unwanted semenicity into an owl, please? God damn, there were some weird things back in the uh, old 16th and 1700s, weren't there? Anyway, we need to once again speak to owl after we've just, you know, frightened him. Who has been jizzing in an owl? That's what I want to know. Who done that back in the day? Anyway, interact with the owl, grab the coins. Oof, it's creepy. And then just interact with the same guy you've got the sword from there, just at the top right of the boat. And that gets us into the next area. Seriously, why did people used to, you know, get stuff? Was a woman or a man not good enough? No, they had to inject their own stuff into owls. Why? Why was that a thing? Anyway, we're coming up to another achievement now, uh, the Astronomer achievement. Again, we need to do this first try. Um, so, again, if you end up failing, of course, I, I don't think you can fail this one. But just in case you do, again, just press start, go into the map, and uh, go back to the same bit that we were. Right, the first one there is kind of the squiggly lines, the letter E, and the bottom one is the opposite one. Um, this one look, kind of looks like a key, pointing to the right-hand side. And then the next one will be uh, what kind of looks like an England flag in the middle. One up and one down. The next one is going to be this um, kind of looks like a person with a clock for a head. Uh, at the top and then the opposite one <laughs> at the bottom. And then the third one is what kind of looks like a guy sort of shrugging his shoulders. So for his head it needs to be pointing up for the up one and then bottom for the bottom one. Up for the up one. Um, so that should unlock the achievement. Again, I'm pretty sure that one is unmissable. But if you do end up failing for whatever reason, again, just use the whole uh, map trick without voiding the achievement. Right. What we need to do here then, if we can drag our cursor. By the way, this is the fastest the cursor could go for me. I don't know why I couldn't get it to go any faster. So ring the bell and then immediately go to the left-hand side of these stairs. And you're going to have to wait for this <laughs> funny looking creature to move on just a bit before we can grab the rope, what he was guarding in the box. So as soon as you grab that, just go right back to the left. Right back to the left. Just go left and then head down these next set of steps. And head all the way to the left hand side to grab one of these delicious looking bows. Right, so we've got everything ready now. What we need to do is dip our ball into some black paint. Huh, I wonder where we're going with this. Are we going for Swingers Club? Are we going for the Swingers Club party right here? No, we're not. We are going to dip it in that black paint and then in with the spikes. And then we can grab the thing that is on the wall, the sort of uh, cannon cleaner type thing. Uh, basically, this achievement is for killing the Kraken with one shot. And we need to upgrade our ammo, which is exactly what we just done. We covered it in spikes and black gooey stuff. Uh, but use the cannon cleaner thing at the front of the cannon, of course. That's how it went. 
I'm surprised by this Kraken, kind of weak. Normally just devour a boat and that's it, but all he's got is one wiener poking through. Loser! Anyway, when you've done that, put the ball in the cannon, of course. The cannon and the cannon. The cannonball and the cannon. Then use the lever to put it all the way to the left. Then use the rope, and that will be enough to kill said Kraken. That's pretty cracking, that one. So straight on to another, you have to do this first time achievement. You need to get through this without the Kraken touching you. So as soon as you see a cheeky little tentacle pop up, just move into the next lane, or whatever it's called. Uh, you, you can press the B button to go left or right faster. Um, not, it's not really necessary, to be honest. Uh, so this one takes about a minute, a minute and a half, so you need to avoid the Kraken, and in just about 30 seconds or so, there's going to be some debris that starts falling down from above you. So just be careful of the Kraken trying to finger you right there, and try to watch out for the debris falling on top of your head. By the way, you can hold your breath mighty. This is fantastic. Anyway, again, do this without being touched. The achievement's yours. Again, use the whole map trick thing if you do get damaged. Holy diver! We've been gone too far in the midnight sea. Yeah, just what you gauge. Definitely not nowhere near as black metal as Behemoth. But anyway, grab the leaf and then grab this kind of stick or whatever the hell that is. Oh, it's an axe. It's not a stick, it's an axe. So what we need to do is repair our boat. Um, now, as you can see, just on the right-hand side, you can see... It basically represents and means the first, oh, well, actually, you can grab this uh, toolbox right here. That comes in handy. Uh, but you need to grab that specific piece of wood. You can't just go ahead grabbing each one because this will happen. And if you do end up getting the right pieces of wood and then pick up a wrong one, um, that one that we did fix um, disappears and goes away and we've got to catch it again. So it's kind of like a bad fishing game, this one. Um, so, obviously, the first one that we need to grab is one that kind of has, a, like, a little, uh, little bit sticking out of it. Uh, you know, fairly obvious in which ones you need to grab. So, there we go. Grab this one, and that's that one. Now, the next one we can see has a kind of big sort of splintered bit down the middle of whatever it is. Anyway, you should know, it, it, it's fairly obvious uh, when you know what you're doing, but um, go ahead and just grab the boards first. So when we have everything that we need, we can now interact with the toolbox on the left hand side because of course we need to hammer them together, which is why if you ended up getting it wrong, uh, one of them would float away because they're not hammered together. So grab the hammer and then just interact with the boards, that'll slap that one up big time. And then, uh, well just behind us right there, um, Harry Potter who can't, again cannot use his wizardry skills. <laughs> But he can pick things up from far away. And just behind us is another big leaf. 
and that uh, automatically goes together so now we can just start going forward um, but before we go any more forward which we can't do anyway make sure to grab the box at the top left right here and then interact with the barrel just below us and that one my friends is a bangeth tidieth big fish gonna come and push us away push us to the next area life is great for old Haza. <laughs> Harry could erase this terrible memory. Ordeal by water was supposed to reveal the truth about Zula, but Harry didn't believe in the guilt of his beloved. Although sometimes, when she would disappear in the night, the disturbing dreams were haunting him. In them he seen Zula deep in the dark forest, dancing frantically by a fire. fire. I mean, to say life is good, you know, is, is Mrs. Gianfranco Zula is still dead, so, you know, a bit of a catch-22 right there for us. Anyway, uh, go ahead and grab the knife first, stick it under the ground, lovely, and then pick up this next item just below us, kind of like a stick or whatever the hell that is. And then we can just head all the way to the left. A lot of dead things in this game, not really that uh, fantastic, is it? Anyway, with the stick thing that we picked up, we need to interact with this basket. The only looking basket on the left hand side. Ooh, I wonder what goods we got in here. Knowing this 16th century plague stuff, nothing uh, that good. So make sure to pick up the stick again. We're going to need that in just a bit. And then um, old Hazard is going to put the basket on his back anyway, so that's all good. So pick up the bones, whatever it is, that are sticking out of animal one and animal number two. And the third one, that is sticking out of the ground there for us as well. So make sure to pick that boy up. That boy. Right, happy days. Now, what we need to do is actually sharpen these. So with the sticks that we've already got two of, um, stick that one in the ground. Then use the knife on it. And that's going to give us a sharp boy. So, do that with the other one, and then you should have three sharp, sticky boys. And then, of course, when you've done that, we can then use the sharp, sticky boys on all three holes. Ooh, but that's going to pinch the holes. <sighs> Nasty. And then we can just climb up until we get to the next area. Right, so coming up to again another puzzle. Uh, so pick up these sort of uh, whatever that is in front of us right there and connect it with the third chain. Again, not sure if this is specific, but this is the way that I done it and it just worked perfectly. Any other way for some reason didn't seem to work. So grab the next one and then put it on the second chain. So we're almost there, uh, but grab the left side rock or whatever that is, and then put it on the third one, on the very right-hand side. And that's enough for us now to uh, jump over. That's the bridge sorted. So go ahead and get your ass up there. We can hear, well, you can hear, some fries. Flies, mosquito things. Hey, chunky. Anyway, just interact with this item in front of us. That's basically, I thought it was a flamethrower, so I was quite disappointed when we interact with the flies and it's just a bit of bug spray. Genuinely thought that was going to be a flamethrower. Would have worked absolutely perfectly. But anyway, with that we can now actually head down. And we can move on to the left. Since we've interacted with all the dead things so far, we might as well interact with these dead flies to pick up another item. So go ahead, pick up, uh, it's basically a stick again, or whatever. 
Here is the flower, so make sure you're grabbing this flower before you're heading all the way to the left. There we go, right, that is that. Then we'll just shove that where the sun don't shine. Apparently the sun don't shine because we don't know where it is. And anyway, this is one of these sort of Hanoi Tower puzzles, and for the achievement we have to do this in the least amount of moves. Uh, which, again, shouldn't be... It's, it's not too bad. I, I go slow enough anyway, so... The smallest one, I'm just going to sort of say it as one to four. Smallest, smallest one, two, three, la four is the largest. So grab the first one, put it on the second stick, then number two, and then put it on the right side most stick. Then grab number one and put it on top of number two. So hopefully this isn't too confusing me saying it as numbers rather than size. One smallest, four largest. Grab number three, put it on the middle stick, and then grab number one, put it on top of number four, on the very left hand side. Then grab number two, and go ahead and pop that on number three in the middle of the middle stick. Then grab number one, and then put that in the middle stick, just on top of number two. Grab number four, and obviously put that on the very right hand side stick, so that is on the bottom. Grab number one and then put that on the right hand side stick um, on the large one Then grab number two put it on the left hand side stick Then you can grab number one put it all the way to the left on number two eh, Number two grab number three of course put it on number four on the right hand side Then you can grab number one put that in the middle stick and then grab number two Put it on number three, number one, number two, and that is how you do that. So again, hopefully that was explained a lot better than it probably sounds in my head right now. Uh, but hopefully you've done that one first time. Again, if you didn't, go back to your maps, try that one again. So in the next area, we can see an extremely hungry woman. We're going to pick up the sticks that were just in front of us and then interact with the well. That is going to get us a bucket. Oh, strange. Strange. I thought it was going to be another dead person with arrows in his eyes, you know, knowing this game so far. Anyway, hello, skinny woman with a chunky belly. You're not really that full, of you. you're not that hungry, are you? <laughs> like me. Uh, and so, interact with the hook on the ground and then uh, the spade in the um, hut right there, and then we can go all the way to the left hand side. Now this bit is random for everyone, but it's not, it's literally not hard. All you're doing is just finding a specific point where this tree wishbone kind of metal detector thing, whatever that is, we need to pick up. Uh, but make sure to pick up the flower first uh, before we uh, move on from this area. So just make sure to grab that flower right now and then grab the wishbone electric, whatever the hell that is. Now, this is only a small part of the ground, but obviously... What you're going to need for it is for the wishbone to start going absolutely bananas, crackers, absolutely mental before you know which part to dig. So this could be at any point for you. Uh, personally for me, it was on the very right hand side of these little white bits that are sticking out of the ground. So as you can see right now, mine is starting to go a little bit bananas. Again, it can be absolutely anyone for you. But as soon as you find the point where it starts doing that... That is where you can now grab the spade, slash shovel, slash whatever the hell you call it from whatever country you're from. So obviously for me it is this very white right hand side one. So just dig them up. Just keep, and basically what you just need to keep doing is keep shoveling them up until water starts spurting out. Just keep playing with it until it starts squirting. <laughs> that means two things. Oh, my face! Ah, oh, man, it smells. Anyway, when, we, when we've got the water, uh, we can obviously now use the bucket to get... I don't know how you're going to get a full bucket, because you sort of have to tip it upside down, and or it'll take a... It, normally, it would take a long while for it to work. But anyway, when you get the full bucket of water, uh, head to the left, and there's going to be a, a, a different bit of colour... Uh, ground right here. This is where it is So you just need to use the bucket of water on this different sort of color part of the ground and that is going to get us some wheat we can collect
With that collected then, head all the way to the right hand side. We are going to feed the poor starving woman. Um, I was just joking about the fat belly thing earlier on. I, I was, I'm sorry. It's very insensitive since she looks like she's on death's door right now. Um, so, we've got all the ingredients we need. So, go ahead and use the sticks and use that in the... Uh, you know, what furnace type, whatever the hell that is. Then use the hook to make a fire. Delishy mundo. Right, then you need to pick up the bread, the moldy old bread. I mean, hey, desperate times cause a desperate measure, yo. There we go, the wheat will go on that. And then, now that we've actually got a piece, you can actually put that in the boiling furnace type thing. Lovely job, that's going to turn to real bread, and you can give that to the... I mean, she's literally skull and bones right now. But she hasn't got an arrow in her eyes, so... You know, take the bad with the good, I suppose. Right, so now she's fed, she won't go hungry for at least another 35 minutes. Um, <laughs> so now she drags us all the way to the left and starts showing us some things. Cheers, big dog, much appreciated. Oh, small dog, eh. Oh, well, she's no good, is she? She just got kidnapped. Right, okay, so now we've got to rescue this chick again. Okay, so now we've got a very skinny-looking cow, but if we head to the right, we're going to pick up these uh, little bits of flowers. Uh, these are not the collectible flowers we've been grabbing so far. And then just grab the knife directly in front of the cow, sticking out of the wood. When you've grabbed that, just use it um, on top of the handle, uh, on top of the cow right there, so we can free him. Which I know Indians are going to be very happy with this one, because the, the cow is very sacred. Uh, it is a sacred symbol of life that should be protected and revered, which I genuinely just love. Um, so, <laughs> that's awesome. But again, don't worry. Don't worry to my old uh, Indian and Hindu friends, we're not going to be harming the cow. We're just going to use... It, it's not going to die, that's fine, um, but we are going to use it to get this, I mean, that guy's so hungry, his stomach, his face has gone inside of his stomach now, now that is the epitome of absolute hunger right there. So anyway, the cow basically blocks the way, so we're all good, so we're not going to get eaten by the, um, whatever the hell that monster thing is, uh, but go and grab this uh, pole sticking out, and then we can grab these bunch of logs as well. Again, as is the norm with every point and click adventure, where the hell are you sticking these items? Uh, grab the hook that is just on the ground right there. Apparently, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make a stew out of rocks and um, face in stomach people. So what you need to do then? Wait, he can't go any further. And basically, we'll just automatically go to this bit now if. The uh, hungry guy starts trying to chase us or whatever, so don't panic about that. But basically, grab the piece of wood that we just got stuck out of the ground and make the screen go left. Like there, there we go. We need to just stick it in that post right there. So as soon as he starts moving to the left, stick it inside post, and then we automatically just head back. Oh man, that is very hungry. My head's gone into my stomach, damn it. <laughs> anyway, what you need to do now is put the logs just underneath the pot, use the hook on it to get a fire, and then use the flour in the pot. It's not a stew, apparently it goes into some kind of black gooey liquid. And then what we're going to do is give a cow just a slap on the butt. Nice slap on the butt. Cows like a good slap on the butt. Gives him a move and that somehow traps this thing, even though he probably re realises he could just use his arms to you know, take the cage off him, but since we don't, he's just looking very sad, pick up, there is a key that is just underneath the Welsh Hunter sign there, sorry about that, but there is a key that we need to pick up, <laughs> uh, just where we're standing, release the skinny fat lady, no, I shouldn't say skinny fat, that's quite insensitive to her uh, starving beliefs, uh, release our friend, new friend, and then we can head down, so, Go ahead and interact with the rightmost pot, the one with the sort of pitchfork slash cactus symbol on it. 
and then just put that all the way to the left hand side. Now the obvious thing would be to put it with the exact same one, but it's not quite as simple as that. So put the pitchfork one on the very left hand side. Next, grab the very left hand side pot. And that should have the O symbol on it. Oh. Oh my god. And then put that in the middle of these three weirdy pots. And then, of course, put the one to the other one. And that will open up Gollum's mouth at the top. So when you grab this out of Gollum's mouth, interact with the door at the very bottom and we can swiftly move on. Righty Moses, so head to the left there's going to be a bunch of leaves that we can pick up there just on the ground. So pick them up, again fantastic to put every single one in your pocket, but you need to take them out, put them on the couple of leaves right there, and <laughs> our lady friend right here is going to do the jump of life, a proper Assassin's Creed style leap of faith right there, and she doesn't get hurt. Anyway, you need to speak to her, and they sort of, they don't speak in this game, they sort of do a grunt like, ah, ah. so all they do is cough and go, ah. Uh, that, that, that's uh, that's play country for you, I suppose, isn't it? Anyway, uh, we need to actually interact with this cave that we apparently aren't going to be able to fit in because we can't crawl. We still don't know the ability to crawl, apparently, in uh, this type of the world. Uh, so the lady's going to go in. She's going to grab a stick that is on the floor. And then what we need to do... Apparently, I think she's too weak. That bread's already wearing off. Jeez, how much bread do you need? Goddamn savages. Anyway, she's too weak to shake the stick at the owl, so we need to grab it. And then use it on the owls to sort of shoo them away. Or shoo the one away, at least. So she's going to pick up the feather and start Usain Bolt sprinting to the left. Jesus Christ. That is a lot quicker than Usain Bolt, you know. Uh, basically, <laughs> what she's going to reveal anyway is a bunch of scary-ass skulls on the wall. Job done. Right, to get to this next bit, for some reason I got confused as hell, um, but all you need to do is just interact at the very, very bottom of the screen. Um, for some reason, that's why the edit was so poor right here, but interact with the very bottom of the screen and then we can go past the cave. I don't know why I was trying to get in the cave for absolutely ages, but such is life. So, again, we are coming up to yet another do this first time puzzle. Very, very easy. Again, you just need to put the uh, correct places in the correct places, or the correct pieces in the correct places, I should say. So, pick up this first one, which looks kind of like a chin, or a beard, or whatever. And then, come on, Kia, 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 let's go to the left. There we go. And we need to place this on the very bottom left. So, get this guy's chin, place it on the very bottom left. Eventually I do it. Jesus Christ, what took me so long? Anyway, grab the next piece anyway, which kind of looks like a um, laughing, happy, evil dude, and place that in the middle. Of course, there's only one place to put it in the middle, and that is the middle right, so just pop that there. The next one, uh, grab the, what kind of looks like a scream, the sort of scream mask or whatever the hell that is. Place that in the bottom right-hand corner, and then with the final piece, obviously just put it on the top left, and that should get you the achievement. Again, if you end up making a mistake, just do the whole map trick, and come back here, and that should not void the achievement. And life is good. Not for Harry, because you almost did good.
Sulla's words were ringing in his head each time he closed his eyes. Amidst the crowd taking her away, Zula managed to let out one final shout. She let him know that only the warm wood ride can save her. He'll have to get the witch's hut hidden in the forest. Harry didn't hesitate even for a moment. Righty Moses then, so if we just head to the left on this boat and pick up this black vile poison There we go, lovely job Um, Got some sad news if you start getting attached to this woman We've just fed her some bread, basically that's kind of like the last meal before execution So you pick up the poison, you give it to um, the lady right here and she's like, oh, drink to wash that bread down with. Ah, oh, thanks so much. Delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, I'll just jump in this coffin for a quick nap. Woo. Oh, it's taking out of me. Eating and drinking all in one day. Um, but we've actually just killed her. So, right. Grab the stick from the, co <laughs> from the coffin then. And then interact with the chains. That's going to basically put the coffin on chains. So, sadly enough then, yeah. So, we just fed her and killed her off. So, well, thanks for your sacrifice anyway, honey pie. I'll see you real soon after I rescue my actual gorgeous missus. Interact with the lever here on the top. And of course, as we can see, that is not going anywhere. So, couple of things, I mean, as usual, in a point and click adventure game we need to do. Interact with the middle of the three cogs right here. I'm not sure if this is totally necessary, but I interacted with the right one twice. And then interacted with the left one. Now, I don't know if you could just interact with the left one and it just goes down and life is good. Or if that is a specific order that you had to do it in. Um, but there we go. So, head to the left. Now, there are basically five coins on the floor. So, go and grab them. Very eerie. The very eerie start that we're getting ourselves into right now. Meow, meow, Guy, bet. <laughs> Looks like a beggar. Looks like one of those big issue guys, really, doesn't he? Um, anyway, we're gonna head, no, sorry, we're gonna head, uh, keep going to the right, sorry, my apologies, got a bit squiffy and a bit iffy right there, but if we keep heading to the right, we need to interact with this big wheel of fortune death thing on the right, uh, but there's only two, um, coins, or whatever these are that we need to use, so the first one is going to be the very middle one, which kind of looks like a stick with, it kind of looks like a cheerleader, one of those American cheerleaders, Super skinny with the pom-poms at the side and the next one is the on the side face on the side guy looking thing So when you do that you can actually interact now with the death style wheel of fortune to grab the two specific coins that are needed So grab them two and then just head all the way to the left After you interact with the lever of course <laughs> Sorry almost steered you wrong there Anyway, like I said, so, interact with the lever, that's going to put the coffin all the way to the left, but um, onto the boat, but we can't actually go anywhere until we feed the Big Issue Man. Uh, by the way, if you don't know what a Big Issue Man is, for those who are not in Britain, he's just one of these guys, but hands out a magazine called The Big Issue. Um, it's just a magazine about big issues, I guess. Anyway, um, get the two coins, interact with the pipe directly in front of us. That's going to pay him. There you go. Big issue, man. That, that gets you some bread for the day, I suppose. Um, and then we can just interact with the lever on the boat, heading to the next area. Momay, so we have another flower that we need to be collecting first, so before doing anything else, grab the flower from the left hand side. And uh, we've got this big weird spider thing that, hey, I mean, we must, it must be our lucky day because that is not attacking us, which is cool. Uh, pick up one of these magic mushrooms, sorry, just regular mushrooms, they look kind of magic though. Then grab the, uh, interact with the body piles on the right hand side. Basically all we're doing is grabbing an arm. And then with that arm, what we can just do is put it in the sort of pile of bones 
directly in front of us, just in the middle of the room right there. And then all you need to do is move ever so slightly to the left. And um, oh, put the mushroom stuff on it as well, mushroom sauce. Then move ever so slightly to the left. And this guy is going to basically act like he's just had his first KFC in about three years. Because KFC is fit and I don't care what anyone says. Love me a bit of KFC. Anyway, with this puzzle, interact with the door and then interact with the second right um, skull, we'll just call it. Then interact with the top right skull. Then you need to interact with the uh, bottom right skull. Next, interact with the, uh, the top left skull. Apologies. Top left skull. And then what you need to do is interact with the bottom left skull right there. And then we can interact with the door. And that should be the boy that gets us into the next area. We'll leave this weird spider alone with his arm-infused mushroom sauce KFC. And right then, a couple of things that we need to be doing and grabbing right here. So the first thing is, there is an item, there is a skull just... At the very, very bottom left-hand side of the screen. Again, apologies, you can't see it. My Welsh enter sign's in the way. I need to make that smaller. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so grab that, and then grab the skull, which is on the organ. And then this sort of... I don't know, kind of looks like a lung, more or anything, doesn't it? Then we can actually head behind the organ, just to the right-hand side of it there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, as you can see, there is a flower on the right-hand side, but we're just going to uh, get everything sorted first. So, put the one item in the left, put the um, coughed-up lung uh, just underneath it, and then grab the next skeleton. Tidy bag square pants. Now, uh, we can grab uh, basically what is a key, uh, more or less, or, I don't know, kind of like a little wiener thing. Then we can grab the flower, and that should be seven out of seven and should get you the absinthium achievement. Um, so hopefully you would have got that as well at the same time that we have. So, right, what we need to do then, grab the uh, kind of animal looking skull and put it uh, just to the left of the sort of middle of the organ. And then with the next skull, the human shaped skull, a lot of skulls in this game. Um, put him again more towards sort of the left hand side of the left part of the organ. If we can actually choose the proper skull, there we go. And that is how it should look. Right, so what you can do, interact with the lung on the floor. And it's basically going to go into play this little tune. Now, to get this achievement, this is another achievement where we have to uh, do this first time. Um, and luckily for you, I've numbered it. So you don't have to count the whole bloody thing. So what you can do is actually just pause it. Um... Actually, right after we put the last item that we've got. Sorry, I was just having a little count there where I actually need to go. Um, but with the last item that we've got, we need to put it right here. Just, um, sorry, my words are not with me today. So just in front of us, right there. <laughs> That'll complete that one. Right, so apologies about that. Gosh, my explanations were about as useful as a chocolate condom. So, if you do these in order, like I do, this is what will get you the achievement. So, as you can see, one, two, three, and four, that is what will, will get you the achievement. Happy days! Again, if you got it wrong, do the whole map trick again, and just go back into it. Uh, but again, you shouldn't have had any issues with that. So as soon as this little cutscene plays out, we actually need to go back to that anyway, to get a secret, revealing um, achievement. Which is actually one of uh, Behemoth's mega songs. So as soon as the cutscene ends, now we can head back into the map. And then just head back to the organ bit.
So you don't actually have to collect anything or anything like that. I've numbered it again. Um, now, for whatever reason, uh, the 1 and 4, by the way, is supposed to be on the same key. And it looked a bit squiff right there. Uh, but for some reason, this took three attempts for me to unlock. So I don't know if you have to do it. I don't know if it just takes three times for you regardless. Or if you have to do it quite quickly. I'm not too sure. But whatever way, if it doesn't unlock for you the first time, don't worry. Just keep doing it. Um, and it will unlock eventually. Again, it took three times for me. Dar she blows. Oh, Father Roshan, Roshan, yeah. Ugh. See, I tell you what, I am gonna be death metal screamist. No, I'm not because I'm really not good at it at all, as you could probably tell. Anyway, we come up to another puzzle now, which is this snake teeth thing. Uh, but grab these three eggs first. Yes, we're hungry. We've gone on a long adventure. It's only taken us about an hour so far, but. Fry up some eggs, bro. Let's get the raw protein in us. Right, so this is the puzzle we need to do first time. So, again, just uh, copy exactly what I do. So, the first one, we need to be um, choosing number number 1. Or I. Then 12. Then 2. Then XI. And then what we need to choose then is the number 8. Then VII, and then number three or five, and then the one to the right of that. Sorry, couldn't see what it was. Um, <laughs> and then choose number ten, number four, IX, and then III, which is of course three. Now, just in case you don't read Roman numerals, of course, that's why I just uh, said the actual Roman numeral rather than the number of it, because. Uh, well, I don't know it either. I only know the very specific ones, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and that's only because I've just seen the clock. So, grab the key from the right-hand side. Hopefully you've got the achievement as well. And then just copy exactly what I do on this puzzle here to get the <laughs> lock. Oh, man, my Roman numeral skills suck ass. So we're actually coming up quite close now to the end of the main game. We've got two very, very small chapters to do later. So grab this um, hourglass, time glass, whatever you want to call it, which was closest to you. Interact with the left side rock thing, whatever that is. Very nice, very nice. Um, interact with the pedestal or the rock on the right-hand side. So basically we just need to create this demon-winged spawn Satan thing. So, just pick up all the items underneath it. There we go. Yes, the other wing, and then the other leg. Don't worry about that. Now we just got to put them all together. So, obviously, where the white bits are, that is where you can put certain things, of course. Very, very easy. So, let's just do the ribcage first. Ribcage obviously goes in the middle. Two wings, of course, for his wings, and his leg for his leg. Pretty simple stuff. Yeah. 
So he basically opens up this puzzle for us, very nice of him, so again, just copy exactly what I do or just go to 10600 for the finished product. So you can just do it yourself if you want to. Oh my god, Zula's alive! Gianfranco Zula, Chelsea legend, she is alive! Awesome! Right, so this is the final room. So, quite a few things to do, so it's gonna take roughly about three or four minutes, so just interact with this kind of dead flower thing, or whatever the hell that is in front of this mirror. We obviously, um, kind of sort of small two puzzles right here, so we need to make this demon chain. Uh, make it look absolutely perfect again, so just grab, I think there's about five items for us to grab, including a very small, tiny little piece right there. There she blows. So again, you can either do it yourself, or if you just skip to 10730, you can see how it's meant to look, and just go from there. So, when you put the last piece on, yeah. Uh, <laughs> this item appears anyway. Basically, this is the true ending that we're getting. So, uh, just interact with the middle of this table right here first. There we go. So, to get the true ending, there's flowers that we need to pick up. And we basically need to put the flowers in and get the chalice to break the mirror. Um, the other ending we get, basically, we just don't use the flowers, that's all. So, what we need to do is spell out the name... Medi Carmen, so it's M E D I C A M E N. Simples. Tidy Bob Square Pants. Now we can just go ahead and grab the chalice, which you're going to need. And again, so with this left puzzle, interact with it once, the outer edge, twice, and again for a third time until you sort of saw a black arrow pointing to the right. Interact with the very middle one. Um, th th that one doesn't actually matter. We can come back to that one, but interact with the second one. Basically, what these are easy. All you need to do is basically spell out the names uh, and just put it together. Um, so, for instance, it should say Contra um, at the right-hand side, uh, as you'll be able to see. And again, if you just hit it again, so that's what it should look like. So Contra, and um, so I just go with that. If that's the easiest way you can. Um, if that's the easiest way that you can think of, just um, get the words to line up. Very, very easy. A lot easier than it is in most other games. But as soon as that one is done... Um, <coughs> excuse me. Jeez, COVID, man. <laughs> Not COVID, just kidding. Uh, but just head to the left anyway, and now we can grab the ball. Or whatever the hell that appears to be. And then grab a flower, which is just 
um, was, which was just underneath us. Right, so there we go. Now we're starting to get. Now it's starting to get somewhere, honey. Right, so grab your chalice and then put that on the floor, uh, just in front of the table, just in front of the mirror. And then basically all we need to do is just put the rest of the two items that we got. Cut one looks like a shriveled dick and balls. Uh, we can just put that on the actual table. We put the thing earlier on. There's the shriveled dick and balls. Uh, <laughs> very funny. And then automatically get a flower out. Interact that flower there with the chalice again. And life is good. We have made it. We are here. there. Okay, no. Behemoth, definitely more talented than me. But that is how you get the true ending. So we will be coming back to Zula's little story in just a bit. But if you press left on the left stick, of course, we need to go back to Harry. So choose Harry in the middle. And then press continue again. We need to do the same thing, except we don't have to piss around with the flower and the mirror this time. Uh, but this still takes about four minutes to do. By the way, me screaming sounds more like um, Trey Parker from South Park. Um, at his, uh, oh, champs to scream, yeah. yeah, that kind of, it just doesn't work. Anyway, pick up the thing, which whatever, whatever was on the bloody mirror right there, and then put that in the middle of the table again, and then just go ahead and sort this piece of the puzzle out again. You're going to have to do the same thing with the right side and the left-hand side puzzle, so just get them to snort it. And of course, interact with the middle of this again, Medi Carmen again, so M E D I C A M E N. So when that's all three puzzles done in the middle of the room right here now, oh, obviously we've got the chalice. So now we can just pop that back on the floor. 
some hardcore demon stuff going on. Now the devil just kind of looks like, uh, hey, what you thinking about? Or more recently, hey, step bro, what you doing? Uh, I'm on about the demon just in the middle of the room right there. The one we are uh, at the top, we're just walking past. Yeah, nice. So anyway, go into the left hand side room again. And then interact with the old uh, shriveled dick of balls. Oh, that's just one regular ball. We can interact with the flower again this time. And that again, that's what makes it uh, shrivel. Shrivel with the balls and dick. Stop saying shrivel dick and balls, sorry. Anyway, we've got the two items. So, what do you think we're going to do with those two items? We're going to put it in the middle of the table, of course, of course. There we go, so stick the other one on as well. But instead of using the flower with the table, just interact with the chalice this time. So don't put the flower on, just interact straight with the chalice, and that unlocks the other ending achievement. So now we've only just got sh two very, very small chapters left to do, and the end of the game is nigh. Nigh is in, it's almost there. I'm, I'm not just speaking incredible Northern Irish right there when they say nigh. <laughs> Accent good. Unlucky Maka. So, Harry didn't get to go to wizard school, he died instead. Top job, top job. So, now we can interact with Gianfranco Zula, start a new game, and immediately head to the right. Again, this chapter takes 10, 15 minutes, if that. So, interact with the window to open that one up. With the moon looking very sad. Man, he must have had a, he's got a hard life doing the night shift constantly. Um, anyway, pick up the items, the uh, the one item that was on the wall, sorry, and then move this stick on the bench. And then just interact with the bench again, that'll put the sort of broom together, but we need to come back to that a bit later on. So just head through the door. Yeah, if you've been doing the night shift every day all your life, I'm telling you on that, that's enough to kill you. Harry, being a lazy bastard as he is, nah, I'm just joking, uh, we need to grab the hook, which is just on the right, right there. Grab the bottle, which was on the table type thing and then grab the stick as well or the whole pot yeah why not grab the whole pot in um open up the chest and then this is basically what we need to do we need to sort them out we need to give him some food we need to give him a haircut because he's smelling like ass lately which don't we all we all have them days anyway pick up the item that is just above harry's head next to the skull owl weird thing then with the one style hook just interact that with the log Get a fire going, put the pot of one leaf in the other pot. In fact, no, we're not doing that. Sorry, my, my apologies. Um, <laughs> we need to put that just to the table on the left-hand side, of course. And that's going to grow more. And that's where we can grab more leaves. Apologies, I almost steered you wrong again. God damn. Anyway, with the leaves or whatever we just grabbed, pop them into the pot. Now, that's going to get us another bit of black gooey liquid. No wonder people didn't survive back in these days, in these times, all they did is eat bloody black gooey crap. Anyway, for now, what we can do is just head back onto the outside. And what we can actually do now is interact with the broom and the stick on the bench. Uh, make sure you've got the, the pot of water or whatever it was um, in your inventory, and then you can pick that up. Lovely, jubbly, bum is squiggly. Whatever the hell that means. Anyway, if we just head all the way to the left, back basically to the starting area. Um, a lot of dead things around here. Couldn't have cleaned that up, no? No? Okay, that's cool. Uh, interact with these sort of pile of white rocks right there. And that's going to reveal an item for us that we can pick up. So, you know what to do. You've done it so far. 
Kind of looks like a dead lobster or something. There's literally a half-eaten cow thing right in the middle of our garden. Is that for decoration? Could be for decoration. Who knows? Anyway, now we can head back into the house. And we're going to sort all Hazard out. You're going to go to your wizarding school, Harry. Don't you worry, you flipping numps off about it, mate. So, what we need to do then is interact, put basically the dead lobster thing, or dead shrimp, whatever that is, put that one in the pot. And now we can interact with the pot, and go ahead and give that to Harry. Look at him. You lazy butt snatch, get out of bed. What do you think this is? Charlie, <laughs> Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, damn it. Who are you, Grandpa Joe? Trying to get those uh, old tiny benefits, huh? I knew it. Anyway, so anyway, <laughs> sorry, interact the pot and interact with the last item that we've got with Harry and he's gonna get that gives us a snippet of his hair but apparently that's enough for him to make him go to sleep as soon as we pick up the candle happy days so a bit of food and a haircut that's all you need to go to sleep these days easy so if you've got any toddlers that don't sleep well just do that feed him up and give him a haircut job done so pick up the candle there so you can see we leave although sometimes when she would disappear in the night, the disturbing dreams were haunting him. In them he seen Zula deep in the dark forest, dancing frantically by a fire. fire. So, this area, what we need to immediately be doing then is just heading back to the left. And again, what we need is the cross on the right hand side. You think you should just climb up on top of the bridge? Apparently that's not enough though. So we got a shepherd and some sheep and everything. So what we need to do is grab the shepherd's cane. Shepherd's stick or whatever that is. So just grab that one. It might not work the first time. Just do it. Just grab it a second time. Job done. Um, head into the right hand side of the forest. There it is. It's very nice. Uh, yeah, I've heard Squidward Tentacles play better than you, butt snatch. And we've got this hungry looking wolf thing right here. So first thing we need to do, make sure your cane is interacted and we just need to interact with the um, wolf trap or the trap. That's going to release him and then what you need to do, interact the candle or your lantern with the wolf and that is going to get us the next achievement there. The bird or the, what is it, the bark and bite bird. Bark and bite achievement. We've released the wrath and hunger, so everyone's happy now, including the sheep and the sheep herder, right? Wrong! The wolf just killed them all. Unlucky mucker again. Which is unfortunate. But what we can do is actually get, uh, grab now the Squidward Tentacles clarinet. It's a flute, I know, but, you know, well, I'm just going to stick with the uh, shepherd's flute. So just grab the flute on the bottom, leave the wolf to his delicious meals apparently and then we now can interact with the weird skull owl type thing uh, but with the flute interact with the hole in the wall oh sorry interact the flute with the skull owl now just copy exactly what i do to get the particular note playing so it is with the um fr from one to five left to right so the fourth finger first so, finger number four. Okay, <laughs> finally that one's done then. And then finger number two. There we go. And then finger number three. Finger number four. Finger number four. I think it basically just goes automatic then. And that is what gets us the pitch perfect achievement and gets us the cross from the weird skull owl from the other side. So, of course, we need to be picking that up. And then we've got to put it on the uh, broken bit of whatever the hell that is. Now we can interact with the hole in the wall. This is another achievement. So, what we're going to do then is push the um, leftmost button first at the bottom. So, push the leftmost button first and then interact with the sort of white, you know, whatever the hell that is, that white thing. Interact and um, press the middle button and then go ahead and click the white button again and then lastly click the rightmost button 
and then interact with the white boy again. And that is going to get us the slide and unlock achievement. Oh yeah. Again, really wasn't that high. She literally could have just climbed it herself. But, you know, she's in a dress and, you know, you don't want your butthole showing to the whole world, I suppose. You're not a celebrity yet, are you? <laughs> because there are a lot of celebrities with their buttholes open. Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, anyway, sorry, moving on. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't have brought that up. Everyone's a porn star these days. Especially with OnlyFans about. Interact with the um, stick or whatever that is. And that gives us the torch. She'll do that automatically. <laughs> and <laughs> then pick up the empty bucket. And then just head to the right hand side. A few things to do in this area then and the first thing that we have to do is make sure you got your lantern sorted and clicked in your inventory and then interact with sad moon um, that's going to get us um, some extra light or something apparently tidy job done what we need to do is gr um, go to your uh, empty bucket and then interact that with the water to get us a bucket filled with water that's nuts, isn't it? And then we actually need to go up all the way um, behind the waterfall right here. We're going to divert the water, is what we're going to do. Incredible. So all you need to do then is just pick up the two um, items that are blocking the water, first of all. There she blows. Yep, that one. That one. And the other one. Come on. There we go. Now, I thought you had to drag it to the places, but basically all you need to do is just um, click on two other parts of the water to divert the water. And the first one is the very bottom left-hand corner. Again, I'll get there eventually. Come on, come on. There we go. So the bottom left-hand water and then sort of two spaces over. So it's looking like that and the water is diverted. That gets us the Italian side job achievement, which I don't know if that's more offensive to um, Italians or... Mario, although I suppose Chris Pratt being played as Mario in the new Mario film would have just angered and offended a lot of Italians anyway. So what we need to do is get the stick torch thing that we had earlier, burn all the vines, and that is how we get the knife. Tidy, pick up the knife and we can then head back to the left. So when you're dealing with the devil, you know you gotta watch your back. Stack, you're thick, you're slick, they pull you in a killer embrace. Sorry, that's uh, just singing a bit of Stone Sour Hydrograd right there. Right, so we need to do this in order. The first one, we have to use the torch on the <laughs> very uh, left-hand side. The next one is the bucket of water. So that'll be the second one. Blop! I could literally sing Stone Sour songs all day. I freaking love Stone Sour. Uh, right, the next one, um, the third one is use the knife on yourself. Give yourself the slice of life. Not exactly a tasty sandwich, that. And for the final one, then, all you got to do is use the moon that we managed to get from the moon earlier on. The sad tears of a man who does continuous night shifts. So, that will get us the... Demonology achievement. Now all you have to do is get the two little bits of grass, place them in the middle one, and that is done. And then we've got literally just a couple of minutes of the next sort of chapter, if you want to call it, to do. Very, very easy. And that is game done.
so finally 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 what we need to do next is go into the sort of um, menu the three little menu bits there and interact with the tree on the right hand side next to Harry next to Harry's face the tree of knowledge uh, right oh then so what we need to do you can press the right bumper to switch characters which we're gonna have to do a couple of times we've literally got three and a half minutes left now so with Gianfranco Zula, use the moon or use your lantern on Skull Owlhead. And then as Eri, go up and grab the two eggs. So one red, one blue, and we've got, luckily enough, one red and one blue snake. Well, that's mad how that turned out. So obviously you need to feed the red egg to the right hand snake. Because, uh, you know, red, red equals red. You can't mess with the system, Jesus Christ. You can't put red on blue and stuff. Feed the other snake, and then what we have to do is a very, very simple puzzle. So just go ahead, click on the snakes. <laughs> As Ari. There we go, eventually we get there. And then what we need to do, you see where the um, sort of teeth marks are, or the marks? We basically just need to put um, the correct teeth on it, that's all. That's literally it. So it, it takes a, a tiny bit of playing around, but it, it is genuinely not that bad at all. Um... For whatever reason, I started struggling with what you had to do first until I realised, and then I sat, felt like a bit of a knob. Uh, but you just got to move it, the, the teeth a bit around a bit, um, otherwise it sort of gets stuck, etc. Uh, but again, generally, not too bad. But when you're at that point, there we go. Just, just interact with the teeth. What am I? I don't. <laughs> I think it was only then that I realised. Oh yeah, I know what I'm doing now. Like a donkey's butt snatch. Yeah. There we go. That's that. So as soon as you do that puzzle then, that is what will uh, automatically finish it. Drag the snakes apart. And then what we need to do, this blue snake's basically going to hit nip in the tree. So as, um, we need to grab the red snake as well as Harry right there. So make sure to do that. Then as Gianfranco Zula. Uh, get your lantern and then interact with it with the snake once and then do it once more There it is eventually we bloody get there and then he is at the prime position that we need so as young Ari You're not a wizard Ari. You've never smiled Ari Even when Gianfranco Zula was alive. No, no smile nothing So we need to hit the red snake that we've got with the onion that is going to uh, get the snake to eat the onion, or fruit. Looks more like an onion than a fruit, to be honest. And then we can just pick that one up as Gianfranco Zula. That is what gets us the final achievement. Ends this DLC kind of thing. And that is the end of the game. So, woo, there we go then, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. That should be you now, 23 out of 23. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the game. I thought it was a fantastic game, to be fair. And for a quid as well, a bargainicity. Um, but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the game and the guide helped as well. If it did, if the guide did help, don't forget of course to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. Uh, don't forget to check me out on my socials as well: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon as well. And a big shout out to everyone who on Patreon who continues to support the channel. You and a big shout out to everyone who continues to support me regardless. Um, but those on Patreon, thank you so so much. Really means the world to me. So that is that then, guys and gals. So. Well, I guess I'll be seeing you in the next one. <laughs> Big love.